Saints of God, welcome to Sabbath School Devotion. My name, Edwin Estime. Let's first start with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have done, all that you have blessed us with. Lord, we ask that you open up our minds and our hearts as we delve into your word today. In Jesus we pray, amen. So yesterday we looked at how Abraham's trip to Egypt, which in the Bible Egypt signifies as slavery to sin, caused him to mistrust God's promise and providence over his life. But now Abram heads back to the promised land and he first heads to Bethel, to which he called the name of the Lord and he repented from all that he has done. And even though Abram slipped up, God continued to show mercy and he continued to bless Abram. And an interesting problem aroused in his camp. Let's read about it in Genesis chapter 13, verses 2 and 5 through 7. Now Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. And Lot, who went with Abram, and also had flocks and herds and tents, verse 6, so that the land could not support both of them dwelling together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. Verse 7, and there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. And at the time, the Canaanites and the Perizzites were dwelling in the land. This, this uncle and nephew duo's possessions were so great that they could not peacefully live in the same area. It wasn't even... Abram and Lot who were fighting, it was all the people that worked for them. I mean, when you look back at verse seven, it talks about how the shepherds of the camps were constantly fighting with one another when it comes to finding the best pastures for their livestock. I mean, I can only imagine that at that time, um, time to time, the livestock may have intermingled with one another. And so they may have been fights about which cattle belong to whom, which sheep belong to whom, and so on and so forth. I mean, it must have been a complete mess. But what happens next shows what type of man Abram was. Genesis 13 verses 8 and 9 states this. Then Abram said to Lot, let there be no strife between you and me, and between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me, and if you take the left hand, then I will go to the right, or if you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. Now let's think about the significance of this conversation between Abram and his nephew. First, the land was given to Abram, not Lot. I mean, God had told Abram that the whole land was going to belong to was going to be belong to him and his children. So this means that Lot has no birthright as Abram's nephew to any part of the promised land. This shows the selflessness of Abram. Even though God had given Abram the land, Abram was willing to share with all other of his family members. How many times do we hear about fights and strife within family members in regards to family estates and possessions? I mean, especially when it comes down to money. I mean, family relationships are often destroyed because of greed, because of selfishness, because they want more for themselves. Secondly, what we find here is that Abram allowed Lot to choose first. So selfless was the character of Abram that even though it was his land, he allowed Lot to choose which part of the land he wanted to stay. In looking at this example of Abram and Lot, Paul encouraged the Philippian Christians in Philippians 2 verses 3 and 4. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Verse four, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Abram thought more about the good of his nephew than other than himself. 
and he gave the opportunity for his nephew to choose which direction he wanted to go. And by doing this, he also gave Lot the opportunity to choose the best land for himself. And this is exactly what happens as we read it in Genesis 13, verses 10 through 12. And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw that the Jordan Valley was well watered everywhere like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt in the direction of Zor. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Verse 11, so Lot chose for himself all the Jordan Valley and Lot journeyed east. Thus, they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled among the cities of the valleys and moved his tent as far as Saddam. Lot chose to go to the Jordan Valley where you had cities such as Sodom and Gomorrah. Now I know many of us are looking at this in hindsight, but if you were to think about Lot's move from an economic standpoint, it, it made more sense. It was a better choice. What he did is like moving to New York City, where there is tons of businesses and potential clientele to grow his own personal wealth. So if his goal was to increase what he already had, then it only makes sense to go towards the Jordan Valley. And this should even pull our attention to the selflessness of Abram's actions here. He must have known that going towards the east would have increased his possessions exponentially. But he chose to give Lot the first choice to where he wanted to go, even though the land was rightfully given by God, his. Brothers and sisters, on what, what lessons can we learn from all this? Christians ought to be kind and generous to one another especially share the gifts and blessings that God has given you. I mean, hardly ever God gives a blessing to someone to be used by that person alone. But he gives gifts to individuals so that that individual could bless others all around them. Let's be like Abraham and share our gifts and blessings to all those who come in, into contact with us. Saints of God, keep the faith.